Oh, there's another one right here. These guys do accumulate radioactive fallout from Chernobyl. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. Guys, welcome back to another episode and welcome to my childhood home, the Black Forest. Now, I have not been back in Germany since 2018. That was a year before I actually started uh, my YouTube channel. And I'm over here right now just for a few days for my dad's 70th birthday. But now that the party is over, I put on the survival pack and we're gonna do a survival mission for the first time in Germany in my hometown in the forest to see if I still have what it takes to survive the Black Forest. I have no food and no water with me. I've got a filter, but we have to find a water source. Just walking through this pasture, I'm recognizing all sorts of plants that I used to eat as a kid. I've got my home field advantage. For example, right here, we've got beautiful, fresh, uh, growing dandelion in the pasture there, as long as there's no bugs crawling around on it. Mm, perfectly good to eat. It's really uh, aromatic and really good in salads. So we can grab a couple of leaves there. Now check this out here. We have not had any rain in quite a while over here, uh, but in these shaded areas, you can see this plant right here carries water dew and it perfectly pearls up on the leaves of this plant. So what we can just do is gather a little bit of dew water and at least just wet our mouth a little bit. Here's some clean leaves. All I'm doing is just licking up the water. And this is actually something that a lot of animals do. Deer will do that even if there's no water sources in deserts and places like that. They can lick up dew water to stay hydrated. Of course, they're doing it all day. We're just gonna do it until we can find a fresh water source with more water. Oh, this one here has lots of water. Ah. Mm. Ooh, earthy. Man, you can see just on my pants just how wet and full of dew this whole area is. I don't know why, this is extremely satisfying. Maybe I've just been out at the farm living with the goats for too long. All right, this ain't gonna completely hydrate us unless we stay here all day, but we gotta keep on moving and get to an actual water source where we can get some substantial water. Now, a major source of survival food that we're gonna be looking for uh, here in the forest is wild mushrooms. Now, there are, of course, some mushrooms in this area that can also kill you. I think we actually have the deadliest mushroom uh, in the world in this area here. It's called the Knollenblätterpilz. Several people are killed by that mushroom every year because they falsely identify it. Right here along the edge of the forest, there's actually some interesting plants uh, that grow. This guy right here, yes. This here is actually a wild herb that we have in this area. It's extremely, extremely aromatic. Uh, it's called Bärwurz. And oh man, it just, whew, man, here, take a whiff of that. See that, it smells uh, a lot like, uh, man, there's a German spice that some people uh, use. It's called Maggi. They actually, I, I think they sell it in the US, but it's really not a popular thing in the US. A lot of Germans love eating it. Absolutely delicious. So maybe we can grab just a little bit of that and then whatever uh, we get later for food, we can use this right here to give it some wonderful, natural, uh, spicy flavors. little watering troughs like this is something that you'll find all over the place uh, up near hiking trails in the black forest either for livestock or some thirsty hikers to come by clear and fresh to drink all right now check out what is right behind me here you're not going to believe your eyes this here is a miniature uh, black forest uh, like farmhouse display and this is actually right next to the house where I grew up as a little boy I mean like two minutes walking distance and they're all powered by 
an actual creek that flows here. None of this stuff is electric. Uh, it's all literally powered just like the originals would have been. And we still have a lot of these original water powered mills out here in the Black Forest. Guys, look at this right here is a giant carnivorous cricket. Got him, got him, got him. These guys here, uh, we used to catch uh, as kids. They're a giant, uh, like a, I don't know if they're more of a grasshopper or cricket related. These guys here actually eat uh, meat. I made the mistake once as a kid that I wanted to keep a bunch of them in a tank together. And I came back the next morning and they were all gone. They had eaten each other. <laughs> Now, if we were really hungry, we could probably eat one of these guys. This little guy here, we're gonna let him go. All right, buddy, today's your lucky day. And all these big round things uh, right here are hay bales. This is how in the Black Forest, uh, they cut their hay, roll it into these giant bales, let it dry, and then they wrap it in plastic, and then they stack them all over out here by the fields. You can see a whole nother stack of them right there. We used to love climbing on top of those things as uh, kids, and we called them dinosaur eggs. here check this little guy out right here doesn't have a sponge underneath uh, putting it into a riskier class of mushrooms I don't recognize him there's actually two more uh, one right here and this guy but we can't ID these guys so we're gonna leave them and it is loaded with mushrooms here guys look at uh, this little guy right here it's a really weird looking mushroom in German we called these guys Ziegenbot which means a goat beard you can kind of tell why. When they get bigger, uh, they've got a whole bunch of these little bristles sticking out. There's actually another one uh, right over here. See that? It kind of looks like hairs. Man, I mean, it's just growing all over the place. Right here, we might have just found a good one. This mushroom growing right here is potentially the king of mushrooms, one of the best mushrooms to eat in the world. He's got some girth going on. These guys have a thick stem on them and they do have a very fine sponge on the bottom side of the cap. The only thing that doesn't seem quite right is the color on top of the cap. It's a little bit too light in color. Now in German, the mushroom that we're looking for is called a Steinpitz, meaning a stone mushroom. In the US, we call them a Kingbolit. Ah, uh, ooh, man, but the one that it could be is called a Gallenpilz, which means like a, a gallbladder mushroom because they taste so bitter. So there's really only one way for sure to know which type of mushroom it is. And that's we got to taste test this guy here. Uh, even the Gallenröhrling is not a deadly uh, mushroom. It's not dangerous. It just tastes super bitter like a gallbladder. Ah, man. Oh, man. Wish me luck, guys. Let's hope that this guy here tastes sweet and not bitter. We're just going to break off a little piece. I don't want to harvest the whole mushroom. Oh man, it smells super delicious, really earthy. Take a close look at that. All right, cheers. <coughs> it's a Gallenröhrling. It's a Gallenröhrling. Oh man. <laughs> All right, sorry, little buddy. Man, such a bitter aftertaste in my mouth. Guys, but as always, when it comes to foraging, always make sure that you guys are very familiar uh, with what you are foraging. Base your information off of multiple different books and take your time learning about different kinds of mushrooms because you can get yourself into really big trouble. Guys, I gotta show you a super, super unique uh, tree. This is a tree uh, that we grew up with when we were just little tiny kids. Check out the way that this tree here grows. Comes out of the ground and then it curves down, grows straight back up. Now what my dad always used to tell us kids was that a big giant sat on that tree right there with his big butt and uh, that he put that curve into that tree that way. And I've found trees like that in the US as well up in the mountains in the Northwest. And I think I've actually told you about this tree in a past episode. Look at this right here. Uh, right here we have a bunch of wild blackberries growing. Look at this, it's a whole bush filled with ripe blackberries. Whenever they're black, you can eat them. Uh, if they're still kind of red like that, they're gonna be really, really sour. You don't wanna eat those guys. Look at this wonderful treat right here. Oh 
Oh, they're so sweet. So, so sweet. If you pick the ones that are hanging in the sun, those are usually the sweetest ones. The ones in the shade don't get quite as sweet. We're absolutely not gonna say no to this uh, opportunity right here. Uh, if you're trying to survive, uh, finding sugars, just energy like this right here. These are carbs uh, that could keep you going energy-wise all day. Mm. Mm. Oh man, I'm just gonna eat them right off the bush like this. Look at this one right here, absolutely filled with them. Oh, there's a spider right here. Hello, Mr. Spider. Don't want to eat you. Man, how amazing is that to have a source of energy just growing right up there? We could keep coming back uh, to those bushes uh, if we need more food for blackberries. They could honestly keep us going all day. Oh, man, there's more uh, edible plants uh, right here. But uh, these guys here, I'd want to eat when they're a little bit younger. I'm coming down uh, to where there used to be a little creek when I was a kid. These creeks here, back in the day, as small as they look, had some really nice trout in them. Oh, oh, oh there's a fish right here. There's a fish right here. Gosh, there's a trout. A trout right in this pool. See, it's, I don't know what it is, but these tiny, tiny creeks have a German trout in them. They're called a Bach Forelle, which is a creek trout. Uh, I wanna say that the American brown trout that we have are a descendant from the Bach Forelle. Genetically, they're very, very similar, uh, except the German Bach Forelle are a little smaller, but they can get pretty big, actually. Let's see if we can see that trout in here, he was sitting right here in the current and I spooked him a little bit. The water here is probably only about three inches deep. I don't see him anymore. I think he's hiding right there in the roots of that tree. There's another pool right down there. Let's go ahead and see if we can see another fish there. Oh, oh, just spooked one, spooked one. There, there, you just see that? Right there, see the ripples in the water? Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is. He's right under us. There he is, there might be multiple trout in this little pool here. This is a deeper pool. It's probably four inches deep, maybe four and a half inches. The water here in these little creeks comes from some swamps higher upstream, and that's where it gets that brown color from. It's actually extremely clear water, but it has a brown tint. But what that does is it makes it very hard to see the fish in here. That's all right, we're gonna leave that little guy alone. Uh, in Germany, uh, for those of you uh, that don't know it, <laughs> fishing is uh, highly, highly restricted. For good reason, they wanna make sure, uh, obviously, to protect uh, these beautiful habitats. A lot of the woods and land in Germany is also privately owned, so you can't actually fish uh, at a lot of places. But of course, little boys still want to do what little boys do. So um, <laughs> we'd sneak off in the woods and uh, yeah, we'd, we'd set up little sticks with the line and a hook and a worm hanging there and we'd shove the sticks just kind of right next to the creek with the worm dangling into the, the creek and we'd leave for maybe a couple of hours looking for mushrooms and then we'd return to our fish traps and uh, more often than not we'd have a trout hanging on there. So I was probably about eight or nine years old when I started doing my first catch and cooks out here <laughs> in the woods. I mean this is this is where it started guys. Check this mushroom out. I have not found this mushroom here in probably about 20 years. This little guy here is super interesting. It's purple uh, in color, and in German it's called the Violetta Lactrichterling. Now what's interesting about this mushroom is while it is edible, uh, these guys do accumulate uh, radioactive fallout from Chernobyl. And to me as a kid, it was a perfectly normal thing. You never even thought about it. You just knew, oh, it's one of the radio potentially radioactive mushrooms and you just kind of limited your consumption of some of these. Now it's just wild to believe that an incident that happened so long ago uh, at Chernobyl had effects all across uh, Eastern Europe and uh, even here in Germany. <sighs> Brings back memories though. We're gonna leave this little guy here. Uh, could probably eat him, but we're just gonna play it safe and uh, 
Oh man, I don't want any radiation in me. <laughs> we already probably get enough radiation from all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> I don't need to get any more. I'm actually seeing a whole bunch more of them. They're growing right here, 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 right down there. Here's another one right there. They grow kind of uh, in a whole area. You'll, you'll find a bunch of them. I'm seeing like probably five more of them. So it's very tempting. Uh, you could come home with a whole bag of those things. But then after eating them, you're gonna have radioactive poops for a week. It's just a joke. I don't, I don't think you'll actually have radioactive poops. Right here, we've got our water filter and our little collecting bag. As always, just squirt the first little bit out. Tastes delicious, zero flavor at all. Super, super fresh. So cool and refreshing. Ah. Guys, we have our first major mushroom find. Oh, check all of these guys out right down here by the creek. These little guys here are called uh, Trompetenpfefferling. It's like a trumpet chanterelle. You can see the trumpet shape right there. Then you can see on the bottom, they look very, very similar to a chanterelle. Man, they actually smell a lot like a chanterelle. And you can see we found a whole patch of them right here. Uh, down by the creek. So this guy here is worth stocking up on. This is a very, very good mushroom. Uh, there's actually a few more uh, right here, some little baby ones. And uh, we're just gonna cut off these guys right down by the stem. Look at that beautiful, beautiful trumpet chanterelle. We're just gonna take the nice ones, the nice big ones. There we go, man, we scored here, boys and girls. Trumpet chanterelles have always been one of my absolute favorite mushrooms uh, to collect out here in the woods. Look at that one right there, that's a beautiful mushroom. Oh, there's even more really nice ones growing down here. Look at this, there's a whole cluster of them that just grew right there. Uh, they generally do grow in uh, groups just like a chanterelle would. Look at that haul of mushrooms right there. Uh, there are a whole bunch of them right here. Uh, you can see they're really, really, really small. Uh, so I'm actually going to leave those guys and we're going to let them grow. This is the last one we'll take. My goodness, look at these giant mushrooms right here. Look at that. These guys are super, super cool. Here, I'm just going to break off a little tiny piece. Uh, you can see underneath, uh, it's got all these little bristles. Now this is a type of hedgehog mushroom, but it's a bigger species. And I recall these guys here uh, either being like giving you an upset stomach or just tasting really bad. So we're not gonna forage that one, but here's another one, look at that. These guys here are related to a smaller species of hedgehog mushroom though. And those ones are actually really good to eat. We're just gonna keep our eye open because often uh, those hedgehog mushrooms and the little hedgehog mushrooms uh, grow together kind of in the same area. Right, <laughs> right. literally, as I want to say, we need to keep our eye open <laughs> because we saw those other hedgehog mushrooms, the big ones right there. Check out what's right in front of me uh, here. This is the smaller species of hedgehog mushroom. Look at how beautiful they look right here in the sun. These guys here are wonderfully 
firm mushroom. They actually from above look a lot like a chanterelle, but then when I pick it, I realize it's a little hedgehog mushroom and uh, they're just as good in my opinion. They're very, very delicious. It's a nice firm meated mushroom. So that is definitely a big score as well. I'm just gonna trim off a little bit of this stuff right here, the dirt. And we'll just leave that in that same area. That way the spores can stay here and hopefully we can get more mushrooms here again in the future. It's actually another one right here. It looks like it fell out. It's got a little bit of mold on it. That's okay. On a mushroom, we can just kind of cut that right off. The rest of it is still nice and firm, a little bit dry. That's still good to eat too. All right, score. Man, this bag here is starting to put a little bit of weight on. I like it. I like it a lot. All right, right here behind me is a tiny, tiny lake uh, that we used to come to as kids. Now there are giant carp in here. And when I say giants, we're talking about, you know, there's up to 30 pounders in this lake right here. <laughs> oh, oh, there's one right there. Did you just see that right there? See the ripples in the water? That was a giant carp. I can actually see one swimming to the right of those twigs uh, right there. There's another one right there and another one between. There's three giant carp right here in front of us. Oh yeah, there's one at the surface right over there. Oh. There's one right there. He probably saw us. We spooked him. Oh, there's another one right here. Oh, more of them. They're absolute giants. Now I tried to get a fishing license uh, when I came here to Germany, I spoke to the local fishing club about getting a license. There's a couple of different licenses you have to get. You have to have a basic fishing license, kind of like a driver's license in Germany. And then you buy uh, day cards for the different bodies of water that you want to fish. So every lake and every stream, every river that you want to go and fish at, you have to buy a separate license. The problem with the license here in town for the lake that we have uh, is that they ran out of fishing cards. They're like a physical card they have to give you and they only had so many. So <laughs> they, they told me to come back tomorrow to get a fishing card. Uh, but uh, unfortunately, I'm flying back to the US. Uh, so of course, as children, we never fished at this lake. And I definitely don't have my PB carp out of this lake right here. Oh, there's another big fish right there, man. It's been a good time. It's good to see you again. Okay, we're heading to another forest where I'm hoping to still find some King Belit mushrooms. But in order to do that, we have to go through my old town. Welcome to Tizi. I'd probably say Tizi is, and I'm, I'm biased of course, because I used to live here. It is the most beautiful uh, town in the entire Black Forest. It's a super popular international tourist location. As kids, we didn't even really know that. We just kind of played in the woods and did our thing. and. Didn't think a whole lot about uh, all the tourists coming here. It's famous for uh, the lake. It's called the Titi Lake, and the name is uh, named after that Titi See. Hey, Rudy. I wollte mal ganz kurz fragen, ob ich den Amerikanern der Welt vielleicht ganz kurz einen echten Schwarzwälder Kirschtorte zeigen könnte. Ist schon ausverkauft. Ist schon ausverkauft. There you guys here at the best Black Forest cake. This is where it's actually from. No Black Forest cake in the world is real, except for. Right here, if you're ever in Tidize, you gotta stop by Rudy's Boat's house. He's, this is Rudy right here. Hi. He's an old family friend. And uh, yeah, well, it's all gone because it's so good. Down here, there's a little dock there. There used to be a sailing club there 
And that's actually where I had my first boat. I used to have a sailboat, a small, just a small little racing sailboat. So unfortunately, Rudy down there didn't have any more Black Forest uh, cake. And uh, really it is the best Black Forest cake I've ever had uh, in the world. But another thing you guys have probably heard about is the cuckoo clocks. And cuckoo clocks come from right here. Those are the ones with the little, the little bird that comes out. Those aren't the real ones. Back here, this is where the real cuckoo clocks are. Now these are made in the Black Forest. You can see the price tag. Oh, where is Dave? Look at the cuckoo. <laughs> Look at that. Now this style of cuckoo clock right here, I wanna say, is the original uh, cuckoo clock that they came out with. And then it kind of evolved into the little, the little houses. And this here, das ist eine manuelle Uhr, ne? Das, die ist nicht elektronisch, ne? All right, so this clock right here is completely manual, non-electric. Uh, you wind them einmal die Woche, ne? Once a week. Once, so once a week, you're gonna wind this clock here. It's beautiful, absolute piece of art, made right here in the Black Forest. All right, so now you guys know uh, if you want to pick up a real, a real cuckoo clock, this spot right here in Tidizé Brunna. Okay, we covered Black Forest cake. We covered the cuckoo clock. There's only one more thing missing, and that would be Black Forest ham. Best Black Forest ham you guys can imagine. No shortage. Look at this real Black Forest ham. All right, we're back in the woods. This here next to me is actually my old elementary school where I went from first to fourth grade <laughs> and the reason why we're in this spot here is during recess I would sneak out into the woods and would start collecting uh, all kinds of mushrooms and I would bring them back after recess but anytime the teachers would see that I found mushrooms in the woods they would like try and take them away from me saying <laughs> that I shouldn't be out there collecting mushrooms and I told them like I know exactly what they are but they didn't care they didn't let me collect mushrooms, so I had to be really sneaky about it. But there's a really, really good spot. If we've got a shot at a King Belit, it's just up the mountain right over here. There's something interesting right up there in the woods. You guys see that tower there? That is a hunting tower, like a blind. Uh, that's kind of how it is in Europe. Hunting is very different than it is in the US. So you'll see these hunting towers all over the place at the edge of fields. Oh, guys, here's a really cool plant. This stuff here, I've never seen it anywhere else in the world, but as kids, we would play with these and, oh, there, look, the seed had exploded. <laughs> Scared me, it totally threw me off guard. Look at this. See that, they pop and then the seeds fly all over the place. But when they're really, really ready to pop, they will explode right as you touch them. Oh, another one just exploded on my sleeve right there. Look at this. <laughs> wow, I mean, it's just violent how those things explode look at this right here these are branches covered in lichen this stuff here is completely dry it's one of the best fire starters in the world Almost had a fire. There we go, there we go. Oh, we lost the flame, lost the flame. Almost had it. Oh man, I think everything's a little bit, a little bit damp. All right, grab some uh, dried leaves. This lichen here looks like it might be 
I can feel it. it is a little bit damp. I found it in a shady area. We'll give it another couple tries, but uh, what we can also do is just take a few of these leaves and uh, bunch them up, try them out as well. They might take a spark. There we go, there we go. Come on, baby, come on. Little smoky, little smoky. All right, we gotta keep this hot. Everything's a little damp, guys. A little bit damp. You can actually hear a little bit of hissing coming from the wood. That means that's moisture hissing out. So, whew, guys, I almost thought we wouldn't get a fire started here. Oh man, that feels good. It's getting a little bit cool out too. Now that it's getting a bit darker, don't need to make a big fire here, just a little guy. Just a little guy. All right, we're gonna throw just a little bit of pre-melted butter into the pan. I'm just gonna break up those mushrooms. Look how beautiful and white this guy is on the inside. Break them into some little chunks and go right in there. Just take a whole handful of these beautiful trumpet chanterelles. Oh, look at that. There we go. Just had to make a little spoon. I realized I forgot a spoon or a fork. I don't have anything, so we just had to make one real quick out of wood. A little flipper. Look at them sizzle in the butter. Now guys, these mushrooms have so much flavor all on their own, so we don't need to add a whole bunch of spices. The only thing we're gonna add is just a little bit of Danish sea salt straight from the Baltic Sea into the pan we go. Look at the giant size of those salt flakes. Look at that. Now guys, I really wanna come back uh, to Germany and actually film a whole series, a fishing series in Denmark and Germany and Switzerland, maybe France. Because <laughs> I couldn't believe that I could not get a fishing license today. I was gonna try and catch a trout uh, out at the Tittiesee and uh, come out here and cook up a beautiful German trout with you guys. But uh, we're just gonna have to do that in another episode. So of course, make sure if you guys are still brand new, aren't subscribed yet, uh, feel free to subscribe. You don't have to, of course, you can just enjoy this one. Oh man, look at this sizzling in the butter. All right, look at these beautiful mushrooms that we have there in the pan. I wanna try one uh, just like that. This is the hedgehog mushroom right here. Oh, it tastes, it tastes nutty. Super, super nutty flavor on that guy extremely firm meat on those hedgehog mushrooms. Man, that is just such a good one to collect. Now I've got our Behewurz right here as a natural uh, herb that we're gonna throw in, but before we do that, I just wanna try one of the trumpet mushrooms, plain like that. <laughs> oh. oh man, earthy flavor, a bit of a chanterelle flavor, and even nuttier than the hedgehog mushroom. That's absolutely amazing. All right, let's go ahead and Break off a little, let's try some. <laughs> it's sweet, kind of like a fennel or something, a fennel spice. I forgot how strong the flavor is on that uh, Beerwurst, so we really didn't need a whole lot. I'm just gonna go ahead and mix this all a little bit. A big trumpet mushroom with a little bit of Beerwurst on there. Mm. Oh man. Mm. Mm, man, we'll be uh, back in Germany probably next year and we'll do a series here, uh, that time with fishing. And I'll be back again tomorrow in the US, up in the Northwest, and we've easily got another month or two of mountain season left. So I look forward to those episodes, guys. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you all very soon for the next fishing adventure. And until then, you all know it, fish on, baby.